Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hut, and then we have a trade. Yes, we have a trade here. Before we get into the trade, I need you to like this video and subscribe to the Baseball Hut too. So we have a trade. From MLB Trade Rooms, this is all around, you've seen it, I put a short of it. The Dodgers to inquire Enrique Hernandez. Now this was a trade that had to happen, I'll read you some of the stuff. Boston will pay down $2.5 million of Hernandez's salary. That leaves the Dodgers on the book for a little more than $1.1 million to the season's end. The Red Sox will be receiving two relief pitchers, Nick Robertson and Justin Hagelman. This is from Jeff Passan of ESPN. Robertson is on the 20, is on the four-man roster and has made nine big league appearances for Dodgers this season. Uh, let's see. Hagelman... Hagenman has never played in the majors. Like Robson, he's having a strong year in Triple A. Do 55 games, do 55 innings spread over 25 appearances. The 26-year-old righty has a 2.78 ERA. Now these guys are middle relievers. Uh, now a couple of things about Kiki Hernandez. Uh, he has been struggling to one of the worst seasons of his career with the with the Sox, battling just two, batting just 2.22. The off-season injury of Trevor Story, which required elbow surgery, prompted the Sox to move Hernandez from center field to shortstop. It was a disaster. The results weren't pretty. With Hernandez returning to a position he'd barely played since 2018 and posting some of the lowest defensive grades of any player at his position. The extent to which the defensive struggles also impacted Hernandez's mindset at the plate at, at can't be known. But his production hasn't dipped at this level since the 2016 season. He's hitting 260 against left-handed pitching, but has been a non-factor against right-handed pitching. <clears throat> Struggles on both sides of the ball were not withstanding. Hernandez is a 259 hitter against southpaws. The Dodgers will hope that a return to the team he called home for the majority of his career can bring him back a turnaround at the plate and on the field. Los Angeles has hit well against lefties as a team, but that's generally been in spite of a poor production from a cast of outfielders. That has looked lost against Southpaws. All of David Peralta, Trace Thompson, and Jason Hayward have struggled in that regard. James Ottman is getting on base at a 366 pace against lefties, but not hitting for power and striking out at a 34% clip. Chris Taylor has gotten on base at a lowly 268 clip, but at least he hit sitting lefties for power. For the Red Sox, with story nearing a return. They'll subtract Kiki from their glut, glut of middle infield and outfield options. Jaron Duran's emergence in center field put a serious dent in Kiki's role with the team, particularly with Masataka Yoshida and Alex Verdugo locked in the, into the corners. Yul Chang is a more versatile infield defender. Meanwhile, and the, the Sox apparently prefer to continue giving the more, more controllable Christian Arroyo opportunities over Hernandez. Here's a quick rumor for you. It seems that the uh, obviously the White Sox are going to be selling. I would think. I would uh, mention that there was a tweet posted a little while ago that the Tampa Bay Rays are extremely interested in two of their starters, Lucas Giolito and Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn is made to order for the Rays, don't you think? That is a trade I could definitely see happening, but we'll keep an eye on that. The Rays are sneaky, and if they've decided to, to take aim on a player. Don't be surprised that player comes back and pitches well. And finally, in this video, the, the St. Louis Cardinals, another team that's expected to sell. I mean, they, they've played so poorly, and their record is so bad. They are definitely going to get. They're definitely going to make some moves. From MLB trade rumors, Cardinals expect to move Paul DeJong, several pitchers, O'Neill unlikely to be traded. The Cardinals' logjam in the alpha has been well documented by now. One path to alleviate in that situation apparently isn't under consideration at this time. Katie Wu of the Athletic reports that the Cardinals plan to hold on to O'Neill at this year's deadline. Elsewhere on the roster, the Cardinals have made it clear to other clubs that they expect the trade starters Jordan Montgomery and Jack Flaherty as well as shortstop Paul DeJong. ESPN's Jeff Passan reports, as Jeff Passan reports, Passan adds Jordan Hicks is a possible trade candidate. I'll mention him at the end of this video. And it's only natural that righty Chris Stratton, another potential free agent, would also be on the block. Moving the 28-year-old O'Neill at, at this stage would unequivocally be selling low. The two-time Gold Glove winner and eighth-place finisher in the 21 NL MVP 
Boating has played in just 130 games since last opening day. Batting at Paltry 229. It's a far cry from O'Neill's Mammoth 286 and 34 home runs in 21. The Cardinals control O'Neill to the 24th season as he'll be arbitration eligible for the final time this season. Wu quotes both O'Neill and manager Ali Mar- Marmol in a piece that Cardinals fan in particular will want to read. Broadly speaking, the organization believes an emphasis on routine and collaborative communication can help O'Neill remain on the field more regularly. Though that makes the decision to buck his routine by placing him in center field early in the season seem particularly curious. O'Neill is one of several outfielders vying for playing time in St. Louis. Lars Newtbar has become entrenched in center field, and top prospect Jordan Walker is currently patrolling right field. He is, hopefully he does a better job than he did in left field. O'Neill's return pushed former top prospect Dylan Carlson to a bench role, and there has been ample reporting and speculation on the possibility of a Carlson trade looming on the horizon. First baseman, outfielder, and utility man extraordinaire Brendan Donovan and Tommy Edmond also factor into the outfield mix, at times being pushed there by Nolan Gorman's presence at second base. The Cardinals would also be selling low on Carlson in many ways, though. The 24-year-old switch his remaining three years of c- club control beyond the current year give him more appeal than O'Neill's one remaining year. Carlson's ability to play all three outfield spots at a high level could also increase the chance of landing direly needed controllable pitching in a trade. O'Neill certainly isn't likely to command that type of return on the heels of two injury plague seasons. The likely trades of Montgomery and Flaherty have been discussed ad nauseum by now. Both are free agents at season's end. Montgomery is the most valuable arm at present. Flaherty looked like a burgeoning ace in 2019 but has seen several recent seasons ruined by injury. De Jong's status as a likely trade target registers as a clear bonus for the Cardinals. Entering the season, he didn't even appear like a lot to make the roster, having slashed just 182 in 2021 and 22. But DeJong has enjoyed a rebound season in 23, heading 230s. That's a rebound? With his typical brand of plus defense. But that's not that's not anything to write home about. Holy, holy crap. Now, a potential big piece uh, that could go for the Cardinals to another team it's Jordan Hicks, the closer of the Cardinals. Now, there is rumor that the Cardinals are exploring a multi-year contract extension with Hicks. Uh, there's a good chance the deal can be finalized within the next few days. An impending free agent, a hard-thrown righty, profiles one of the top bullpen trade candidates before the deadline. And, you know, typically, and obviously, an extension of advance of next Tuesday's trade deadline would take him off the market. He's 27 years old and in the midst of the, be- of the better seasons of his career. He owns a 3.67 ERA across 41 and two-thirds innings. His strikeout here is out at a personal best 31.2%. Hicks and twin star Joanne Duran are the only relievers with a strikeout rate north of 30%. The outlier of combinations of a combination of whiffs and grounds is built on velocity almost unmatched around the league. Hick, let me tell you something. Hicks would be a great addition to any bullpen. There is a couple of things. Uh, he's had Tommy John surgery. There's been health issues. And to be honest with you, he does walk a lot of batters. So if you're going to be in a playoff run, you know, you got to be judicious of how you use him. You've got to get to a really good pitching coach. That is really uh, would be very interesting for the something that the car should look into. If they're going to move him. Any team wanting to pick him up better, better be able and prepared to, um, you know, straighten out his his walk issue. Anyway, let me know what you think about this video. What do you think about the Dodgers trade? What do you think about the White Sox availability of Lucas Giolito and uh, Lance Lynn, and of course this whole situation with the Cardinals? Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut too. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.